Learning from Adult Role Models Who Are Deaf or Hard of Hearing, presented by Outreach Programs, the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind. The CSDB logo is displayed with the tagline, Learning, Thriving, Leading. Our presenter, Kathy, is standing in front of a brick wall. She is communicating in sign language. Captions are below on screen. Title, Kathy. Hello there. I'm Kathy Noble Hornsby. Now, we're not really sure if I was born deaf or hearing. However, my parents found out that I was deaf at the age of two, two and a half, somewhere in there. They thought I was able to hear up until that point, until my mom noticed when she dropped something that it was extremely loud and it was behind me, I didn't res respond to the noise. Prior to that, I was very alert and very aware of my environment until that incident. At that point, I was doing my thing, playing, and things were dropping behind me, and I was completely unaware. So she knew there was something not right. So they took me to the doctor and found out that I was deaf, and they were devastated. They didn't know what, know what to do with that information. And this was in the early 1970s, so the resources and the education and information was not available at that time. I did not sign growing up. I grew up um, oral. I had hearing aids. I had speech therapy. I had auditory training. You name it, I had it. My mom brought the old-fashioned cassette recorders. You, you might f be familiar with that. It was, uh, you could flip the tape over and use that, and I would bring that with me wherever I went. I'd bring it to, with me in the classroom, um, and they would watch. I'd have to keep an eye on it to make sure that the tape didn't run out. And then I'd bring it home, and my mom would actually listen to what was taped and make notes of what she heard. Title, Challenges. I was in school all day, and uh, my mom would have to scribe what she heard on the cassette, and that would be an all-day affair. I went to private speech lessons as well as auditory training. Um, I had that in school, but then there was more intense training after school. So basically, my childhood was primarily focused on speech, auditory training, um, obviously learning uh, at school, English, writing, your basics. I was bullied in sixth grade. I determined I didn't want to go back to that school with those kids because they would bully me. I mean, they were innocent. They weren't aware of deafness. Uh, the teacher spoiled me in the classroom, so the hearing students perceived that as favoritism. They thought that was unfair. They thought, oh, the teacher's, Kathy's the teacher's pet, and they wanted the attention. And I can appreciate that, and as a result, I was bullied. It was not a good experience. I mean, I'd run home crying to my mom, and my mom was at a loss. She didn't know what to do with the situation because she didn't fully understand the deafness piece. At that point, I went to a mainstream program. That's a program that has uh, resources for deaf people. Uh, they have interpreters. They have note takers. Um, they have one-on-one -on -one sessions. But again, I wasn't signing at that point, so that was not beneficial for me. So I remained in the mainstream classroom with hearing students. I was the only deaf student. I had an oral interpreter. That helped immensely because I was able to catch everything that was taking place in the classroom. Prior to that, I would solely rely on the tapes. I was left to my own devices, but now I was aware of what was going on. If the teacher would turn around, I would know what they were saying. If the student would come into the classroom, I would know what they were saying. Uh, so that situation was much more comfortable, but yet I still wasn't satisfied. Title, Family Support. I grew up in a family of five, and I am the baby of the family. It was pretty great because you get the best of everything. And everyone else in my family are hearing, my siblings are hearing, my parents are hearing. Uh, there's no history of deafness in my family. Uh, we didn't utilize sign language. So it was a whole new word, new concept for my family. My family's really cool because we do a lot of volunteering. So we go out a lot, we learn the values of volunteering by being with other people. So that really makes up a lot of my personality. It's a big part of who I am. I'm assertive, I'm not afraid to learn new things or to meet new people. Um, I need to satisfy that curiosity factor. My dad had a Halloween magic shop and I grew up in that shop. My dad was great. Even though he didn't know sign language, he didn't really understand deafness, 
And my speech at that time was extremely high pitched and my dad couldn't stand it. But he didn't allow that to stop him. When I was working with customers when they'd come into the store, I didn't understand what they were saying. I would call my dad over, he would make his way over and listen to what the customer needed and then let me know what the customer needed. He never enabled me. He never took over the situation. He never pushed me aside to step in. That was never the case. He always provided that empowerment to me ever since I was a child, which was very nice. My father's store was also another opportunity for me to meet people. And it was just a place that I could be creative, be open-minded. There was just so much to offer in that shop. It was a, just a great thing. Kudos to them. For parents who were, knew nothing about deafness, I grew very well. I don't have any struggles. I don't have any frustrations. I have no angst towards anybody else. They didn't understand deafness. I've been able to be cordial. I have I've been able to use it as an educational opportunity. I was able to satisfy my needs as well as their needs. I've been involved with uh, learning about history. I've gone to some museums. I've gone to Broadway plays in New York City. I grew up on the East Coast. Uh, I traveled quite a bit. bit. Um, I been to all the 13 colonies and my parents always made sure that I understood everything. They gave me reading materials or they would uh, repeat things for me to ensure that I was understanding and following the information. Uh, I would work with the tour guides. I would have to look at them directly. They would have to stand next to me and make eye contact. They couldn't talk behind me. Um, obviously I couldn't see them if they did that. So it was a great uh, experience, very empowering. There is one thing that I desperately wish. I wish my parents had the opportunity to hear different options. They were just so focused on the auditory speech uh, approach. And I can understand that, and we took advantage of that, but in the, it was, was not enough for me. I can't hear at all, and lip reading and speech can be taxing on the eyes. It's very fatiguing, so I wish they knew the other options that were available to them. Title, University and Career. I went to Rochester Institute of Technology, RIT, and it was there that my entire world changed. The reason being, they had a program for deaf people at NTID, and they had a campus for students who were hearing. They focused primarily on hearing students. You could mainstream between the two, but what a n wonderful experience as a deaf person who was oral, I didn't identify with deafness yet. I didn't have that deaf identity. So it was a bridge to both worlds. I could socialize with deaf people and hearing people. I would learn sign at NTID and then I could go and be in the hearing world and work between the two worlds. And that is when I realized about deaf culture. It opened my eyes to change my whole world. Not just the signing alone, but we had we were one and the same. And you know, it was there that I realized I like to touch people and I didn't understand why. And the reason was is because people couldn't hear me. Uh, I couldn't shout out to a person because I had no control over my voice volume. So RIT was just a wonderful experience and having signing all around me, I could understand what everybody was saying. I could be a part of the bigger picture and I knew who I was as a person. Well, at RIT, with all of the signing, I was able to express myself. Uh, I felt better, things made more sense. I didn't struggle with the thinking process. <laughs> I became more sarcastic, and that was not a skill set I had growing up because I couldn't articulate that. But now with signing, I could joke around, I could be sarcastic, I could be funny. When I was growing up, I always wanted to work with parents of deaf children that utilize the oral approach. I wanted to give those families more options, generally speaking. Um, at that time, I didn't know American Sign Language, so it really wasn't an option, but I wanted to work with those children uh, like my parents worked with me. So I envisioned working with parents of deaf children. While I was at RIT, I was there for five years. I studied social work, graduated, but I was not exactly sure what I wanted to do with that. Uh, working with people, the schools, the families, 
working as a social worker uh, or perhaps working with law enforcement. I didn't know which avenue to take. They were establishing a new program uh, after the Deaf President Now movement, uh, an access to communication now. It was a huge campaign that was going on back in the 80s. Uh, they uh, opened a campus safety position, and I thought, huh, that's kind of intrig intriguing. That kind of piqued my curiosity. I thought, what would it be like to be a law enforcement person? So I dropped the social work, and I took this job. And I have to tell you, that job, that experience was awesome. I was able to implement that program and educate the staff who were hearing on how to work with the security officer that was deaf. I decided to become, perhaps, becoming a social worker advocate because that has legal aspects as associated with it. So that seemed like a good idea. I moved to Colorado back in 93, and I went to the University of Denver, and I majored in social work, and that's where I got my MSW. When I moved here to Colorado, I must say it was a huge difference compared to the East Coast. Admittedly, they're a little bit behind and I was back in, in the hearing world. There was no deaf people at DU. There was no other deaf students at DU except for the weekend students. So I was totally alone. It made me realize that RIT made me better understand my upbringing as an oral person. I understood deaf identity. I found out who I was. University of Denver, I had that. Uh, deaf identity. I educated my classmates, I educated the teachers, and I was able to work with that. And I was more comfortable in the hearing world. It was my comfort zone, but I was able to work between both worlds, and in the end, that was a benefit. Title, Advice. Currently, I work as part of the early intervention team at Colorado School for the Deaf and Blind. And when I'm meeting with families, I always emphasize a few tips. First one being, don't be afraid of your child. Yes, deafness is a different world, absolutely, but it's not impossible. And I tell them to keep in mind uh, a few things. First, keep things visual. Yes, words and vocabulary are important, but initially, when the child's learning, they're not that critical. I'm not suggesting just sign language. I'm talking about everything needs to be visual. We can learn more because we don't know what we don't see, because we don't have the auditory piece, regardless if we wear hearing aids or cochlear implants. Vi visual is the way to go, and it gives everything uh, available to your child. Second being, empower your child. Let them try whatever they want. Don't let them feel intimidated. Don't have them have the mentality that they can't do anything. Encourage them to try something. And if they don't like it, move on to something else. Foster that. And with that, they can find their own comfort zone and a comfortable place to be. What are some other tips I share? Oh, don't do anything for your child. Don't take over. Kind of guide them. Be with them. Be their mentor. Be there for them. Be encouraging. And again, it's all about empowerment. I encourage parents to be part of their child's educational experience, the entire educational experience. It gives them the opportunity to meet the principals, the teachers, anyone that works directly with their child, they can meet. And in doing that, you can educate the team about how to work best with their child, as well as if the team has expertise in a particular area, they can educate the parents and they'll have that collaboration and essentially they will become a new team for that child. Title, Closing Thoughts. My struggle is when I meet people, um, I'm a very gregarious person, I'm friendly, I'm outgoing, assertive, and that might actually scare people away from me. And that's very disappointing. I can appreciate though that they've maybe never met a deaf person. I understand that. I don't look different though. I don't behave differently. I'm just like everyone else, just that I can't hear. I'm able to speak well, I can write well, I lip read well, I'm fluent in sign language, I can draw, I can gesture. I have all of those skills. I'm just a very outgoing person. I like to be with other people. Yes, I am a deaf individual, 
I am very proud, and I would not change a thing, one iota, about who I am. I've worked hard. My family made sure that I was empowered and had that sense of independence. I was determined, and I want people to treat me the same way. This has been a production of the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, 33 North Institute Street, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80903, 719-578-2100, www.csdb.org. Videography by Deb Branch and Sean Levier. Copyright CSDB. Narration, Marcy Murphy. Audio description, Jim Olson. Captioning, Bonnie Atmar. Editing assistance, Diane Covington, Dr. Laura Douglas.